Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander. Merry Christmas. I hope you have the best holiday season so far. The holidays are such a great time to celebrate what's most important to you, whatever that is. So I hope that you've had an amazing day, week, month, and you've been just celebrating everything that's important to you, festivities, family, friends, gifts, religious activities. I really hope that you had a wonderful and amazing holiday. But I have a question for you. In one week, it will be 2024. Can you believe it? We say this every year at the end of the year. Gosh, this year went by so quick. It's full of ups and downs. Sometimes it's really difficult to even remember all the things that happened. Now, I always love to go back through my camera and my phone and, and look through all the different months and, and do a reflection of like, oh, January and what happened then? And, you know, your phone, usually if you take a lot of pictures, um, your phone's always a good reflection or even looking back at your calendar. Oh, what did I do this month? What did I do that month? What, what did I forget? What can I remember? Right. But I want to look forward. And yeah, everybody does this this time of year because it just tis the season, right? But this is going to be a little bit different and I have a gift for you. But the question that we're going to address today is what do you want 2024 to look like? The gift I have is a download that you can print that goes along with this episode. It has, it's like a worksheet, but it has a place to reflect. So it's not like, you know, just fill in the blanks and you're like listening and, and, you know, filling in the right answers, right? It's your answers. But it's just a small thing that I can give to you that really helps you decide what you want 2024 to look like. And this is this is different. Like, the, you know, before we go to goal setting, like go back several episodes, I think it was um, like five, four or five episodes ago or something. And we talk about goal setting earlier on um, before we got to this point of, ha of the tactile, practical, what steps are you going to take, what tasks and dates and all those kinds of things. But this is just a little bit different. There's, there's a place for all of that. And you can go back and listen to those couple of episodes if you want to put that episode first and then this one or this one and then that one because I'm giving you all the resources that you need. But today is a little bit deeper. It's a little bit more personal, a little bit more reflective. There's no right or wrong answers. There's no dates or times that you need to put on all of this. These aren't the smart goals that we're setting. This is a little bit more about what do you want deep down and why and what are some of the things that we can move closer to that so go to mommyincome.com forward slash big dreams right now and download your worksheet download the sheet and you can do it anytime i'm going to tell you and warn you this is going to take time so you might listen to this episode twice because right now whether you're walking the dog or you're 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 um driving in your car or you're passively listening because you're doing other things that's great but this is more of a participation for yourself kind of episode so i want you to print out this this worksheet and just give it some time set aside 30 to 40 minutes or maybe an hour for yourself to really think about these things life is so crazy busy but you deserve some time to think for yourself and decide what it is that you want 2024 to look like because guess what 2024 is coming and you don't have to have every t crossed and every i dotted and every goal set for every quarter and every day this is just a call to look inside for a minute and decide what's serving you what do you want to do what do you want to accomplish and why and this is all personal no one's looking at your paper no one's gonna you know look at it and be like oh that's not a good goal or a bad goal or you can want whatever you want however you want there's no judgment here but this is something that is just going to be a good resource for you to come back to because i promise you one thing about 2024 it's going to bring circumstances that you didn't expect it's going to bring hardship and joy pain and sorrow because that's what life is but you can also decide how you want that to look and what steps you're going to take inside of your control in order to build the life that you want and that you love and that is possible regardless of what's going on 
You can choose every day to step closer to your in a perfect world scenario and your happiness and your joy. So this is going to be a little bit more reflective. Mommyincome.com forward slash big dreams. Get your download, print it out, and we can go through this. If it's not not at the time, just sit and listen and then come back to it. We can make the most of our decisions based. We make most of our decisions, excuse me. We make most of our decisions based on how we want to feel. So this is going to be focused a little bit more on how you want to feel about your goals, about your life, about all these things. So it's going to take some time. In order to prioritize your goals, you need a good understanding of what you want to be happier in your life. Get a copy of Big Dream Step Small. (laughs) Dream Big Step Small. I can't even say my own book name. (laughs) This is crazy. Get a copy of Dream Big Step Small. In chapter three, it's building your inner perfect world. You need to know what you want before you've determined the steps on how to get there. So some of the things, typical areas that we look at these these people or people make goals are like family, finances, physical, personal, spiritual. Um, We can make goals in all of these areas. But most of the time our goals are going to be summed up in one of these areas like family, spending more time with your kids or your spouse or your grandma, financially saving towards an emergency fund or paying off debt or starting a business or funding your business, physical, usually being more healthy, more active, um, taking up a new hobby is personal, maybe educating yourself more, um, devoting more time to your spiritual energy, um, your religious beliefs, whatever it is that you have there. We all we're, we're all whole people we have all these areas of life and yeah each one of them can have a certain goal but i want you to think about how you're designing your goals based on how you want to feel and within each area as we have the goals what we got to think about what's most important to you and you want to ask yourself some questions to determine this is helping you determine where to put your focus Because like I said, these are four or five different categories of goals that we're going to have. And we're going to feel pulled in all kinds of different directions. Do I focus on my personal goals, my spiritual goals, my financial goals? All of the above, but stepping really small. But these questions are going to help you determine where to place your priorities, where to focus so that you can accomplish all of these things. So. Question one is really, what goals nag you most often? What keeps you up at night? What worries you? Are your finances suffering because you can't earn enough money at your current job? Um, This is a goal that can fit within all areas because financial stress causes a lot of problems. It can actually cause you health problems and personal problems as well, even with problems within your family. If it's a financial goal, what keeps you up and nags you the most often? And always determining within your goals and within your your sights is what can you control? We don't wanna set goals outside of our control. I cannot control the weather. So, My goals cannot be determined based on that, right? We have to look at what we are in control of. We are in control of what we say, what we do, our responses, what we do with our emotions, how we set our boundaries, how to set our goals, and what actions we're going to take to get there. So always be thinking about what is it that you can control in these areas. Next, which goals can be accomplished the easiest? Some goals are very short term, but they give maximum impact without too much work. Like walking 15 minutes per day. Y'all know I'm all about the 15 minute hustle, right? If you don't have my 15 minute hustle workbook, go to 15 minute hustle.com, go to mommyincome.com forward slash 15 minute hustle and get your 15 minute hustle workbook. This changes lives y'all not kidding. It's a very short read. It's a short workbook, but it will change everything. 15 minute hustles change everything, including, Hey, Maximum in- impact without a whole lot of work. What can be accomplished easily? 15 minute hustles, including 15 minutes of walking per day. It, not much, but it's also 
progress in the right direction. It can give you huge results and a feeling of accomplishment. 15 minute hustles, 15 minute walk, uh, 15 minutes of yoga, 15 minutes of meal prep. We don't have to do things for hours on end. It doesn't have to take that long. Like you could hack into Pinterest right now and find um, tons of even family friendly recipes that can take 15 minutes or less to prepare. Shortcuts are fine. You have my full permission to do everything in life in 15 minute hustles. I'm telling you, your life will change. But what can be accomplished most easily? Why do we focus on easy goals? Because we like the reward system. We like to feel accomplished. We like to know that we're doing things and working and moving in the right direction. Practice makes you better. It also, when we have a reward system, the reward system is checking it off the list saying, I did the thing. It's a peaceful reward in itself. Pat yourself on the back, it's okay. I did the thing and I'm gonna do the thing again tomorrow. And then your 15 minute hustles can turn into 20 or 30 minute hustles. What they really do is beat procrastination. You can do anything for 15 minutes. Really, anything. Next, which goals would give you the most pride in yourself? Would you feel better about yourself if you took another class and learned something new? Would you feel better about yourself if maybe you lost 20 pounds? Would you feel better about yourself if you spent an extra 30 minutes with your children every day? or your spouse, or your grandmother, or your bestie? How about finally reading that book that you've been waiting to read? Would that give you the most pride knowing, hey, I finally read this book. I finally did this for me. Keep in mind that there's no wrong answers here. Although being healthy might give you more time in terms of time in your life because you're taking care of yourself, Something that would give you the most pride when I get to the end of this goal, when I reach this goal, I'm going to feel this and this. I want to feel this and this. What's going to give you the most pride in yourself? How about this one? This is kind of the one, the scariest one sometimes for me, honestly. Which goal do you have? that's going to have the most permanent results. When choosing whether to spend extra money towards a degree or determine what you're going to do in your life, a permanent result is something that someone can't take from you right? Like that degree. If you spend money working towards a degree or working towards an education or taking a course or a class, no one can take that from you. That has a permanent result. The permanent result was that you learned something new. So if you're saving money for maybe a course or a class or a trip or a conference, that's yours to keep forever. That is a permanent result. That's worthy of working towards. Lowering your cholesterol and keeping it low. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I'm just saying that certain things like that, maybe there's heart problems in your family and lowering your cholesterol is something that your doctor told you you need to do. That can have permanent and long lasting results. It is worth your effort. So determine which goals have the most permanent results. And that will always be an accomplishment. This year, I went to the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Program, a decision that I procrastinated about. I actually tried to self-sabotage myself, honestly did. Before I was accepted into the program, I was so scared and worried that I wasn't going to be able to do the work and run a business and be a family, a good family mom and wife and everything else. I'm like, how am I going to do all this? And so I deliberately didn't turn in all the paperwork that they required because I thought, yeah, well, I, I half asked it, I'll be honest. And yet they pursued me and they said, hey, we're missing some of your paperwork. We'd love to be you to be part of this program, but we don't have this and this and this. And I was just honest with them and I said, oh, I don't have all that right now. And they're like, okay, get it to us when you can, but we still wanna accept you into the program. That program changed my life in so many ways. 
the education, the people I've met that I will forever know. Some of the women and men that I have met in the Goldman Sachs program and the curriculum and their teaching and their wisdom will stay with me forever. That is a permanent result. One that I tried to sabotage. But you know what? It was worth it in the end. All the work, all the efforts, all the everything. That can't be taken from you. So which one of your goals has the most permanent result? And along the same lines of that, which goal will still impact you five or 10 years into your future? If you start a business today and you work daily towards meeting the goals of that business, what will be different in five or 10 years for you? How will that impact your future? Y'all, in this instant society, no one's thinking about this stuff. No one's talking that much about it. It's a flippant idea. This is worth your effort today. It's worth your effort to print out this worksheet and walk through this. This episode will have lasting results if you sit down and do it. Which goal will impact you in five or 10 years? Recently, I heard a health coach say that how you're living now is going to be a reflection of how you're going to feel in 20 years. How you treated yourself 20 years ago is how you're feeling today. So if I'm rewinding back into my 20s, because clearly 20 years later, 40 plus, right? How did I treat my body? How did I treat my my spirit? How did I treat my health? Because today might be a reflection of the actions I was taking for the past 20 years. And how do I want to feel 20 years from now when I'm in my 60s? That had a huge impact on me. That's something that will impact me in five or 10 years, taking care of my health, eating healthier, sleeping better, resting more, walking, enjoying nature, that will continue to impact me in five or 10 years. Not necessarily losing a certain amount of weight or something like that, but literally just taking action steps to make sure that I'm feeling healthy, drinking more water. I know we all roll our eyes. We all know the basics. It's basic. But a 15 minute walk every single day outdoors will absolutely continue to impact me in five or 10 years if I'm consistent with it. It will impact me today as well. More energy, fresh air, oxygen, so good for you. What goal will impact you in five or 10 years from now? It's worth your effort. We can't always be thinking about today. Lord willing, we have a future and we will have 20 years more to live and how do we want that year to feel? What we do now absolutely matters for the then. If you don't save any money for retirement, you can't retire. If you save a little, then you'll live on a little. If you save a lot, you'll live on a lot. If you pay off your assets and sell them, then you'll have finances to live in your future. What will impact you most in the five or 10 year period? Focus on that. Which goals align with your core values in life? What are your core values? What do you value most? People, relationships, your business, your finances, honesty, integrity, kindness, love, volunteering, animals. Which goals align with what your core values are? That's really where you're going to find all of your identity. It's not in what business you do or what career you have or what role you play right now. What, are, what do you value most? Those goals are the most important. What goal... Are, what goals are completely up to you, 100% in your control? 
remember, you can't control what anyone else does. So if a goal relies on the participation of someone else and you don't have their participation, you might want to switch gears and focus on something that you actually can control. Yeah. The Amazon business, believe it or not, is not 100% in your control. That doesn't mean we don't focus on that. I've been Amazon selling for many, many years. But I can only focus on things that I can control within the process. We are going to be at the mercy of other people sometimes, other businesses, other circumstances. But I encourage you to focus on some of the goals that are completely up to you. How about which goals cause you the most fear? Why? Why does it call you fear? Sometimes the very thing that you fear most is what's best for you. Look really clearly at your goal and figure out why it scares you. Be honest. There's no one else that can determine these things except you. There's no one else who can take action except you. Sometimes it's the unknown. And ripping it off like a Band-Aid and just doing it might be the best cure. There was something earlier this year that I was somewhat forced to do and absolutely terrified to do. I didn't have to, but it would have major consequences if I didn't. And someone said that, just rip it off like a Band-Aid. It'll hurt for a moment, but I promise you'll feel relief. They were right. I just ripped it off like a Band-Aid, got the thing done, cried about it, got upset about it, and then was like, wow, the relief came almost instantly. Sometimes the very thing that we fear most is what's best for us. What goals cause you the most fear? Focus on those. What goal makes you most excited? Some goals immediately send tingles down your spine, pushing you forward to do it. These goals are easy because they probably impact your life, impact your, your feelings, impact your positiveness. Always looking at the why. What goals make you excited? Those ones are sometimes the easiest ones to do first, right? The ones that we're excited about, that we want to do. The harder ones are the ones that we put off. But exploring your why and just being honest with yourself about it is part of the problem. You don't have to fix and cure everything right away. Acknowledge and be aware of how and why you feel what you feel. What makes you most excited? It's definitely an area you want to focus on. And what goals are the most realistic in the time frame? The best goals the ones to put first are the goals that best fit into your life today. They cover all four of these areas and they still fit into your schedule. When you can control 100% of the effort, the results are yours to keep. So when you answer these questions, you'll really be able to see how your goals can practically organize themselves, to be honest. Try making a chart of them. You can see the four areas. You can see the five, four or five areas in which you want to improve. And then you can make your SMART goals and your task lists and your on Q1, I'm going to do this. And on this week, I'm going to do this. And this week, I'm going to do that. Those are all tactile and practical and great. But first, you have to really understand what's most important to you. This is going to help you prioritize what you want to do first, second, and third. And you can also do a lot of these simultaneously. Working on my health and working on my business is simultaneous. I can do both. I can do my business during the day. I can take walks in the morning or in the evening. I can I, I eat throughout the day. That's part of my health. Each choice. How is it going to impact you in the future? How is it going to impact you today? 
Are you excited? Are you afraid? Are you all the things? It's okay to get into your feelings and figure out what it is that you really want and own it. This is just for you. This is a gift for you. So go get the worksheet, mommyincome.com forward slash big dreams. Download the worksheet, fill it out for yourself. Take some time for yourself between now and the beginning of 2024. I'm not asking you to map out your entire year. Just start reflecting and start thinking about why and what you really want because you deserve it. You deserve to take control of your life and impact it in whatever way you want to. You are worth the work, but it's going to take work. It doesn't, doesn't have by, happen by osmosis. You know, like a teacher used to say, you can't take your textbook and hide it under your pillow and expect to wake up in the morning and have all the knowledge that's in it. You actually have to open it and read it. This, you actually have to download, print it, and write some things down. Oh my gosh, writing. Yeah, it's tactile. There's major things that happen when you take pen to paper and you write out your thoughts and write out your goals. There's been major studies about this. People who write stuff down, a goal, anything, they accomplish more by writing it down, by being accountable. You guys, you've got this. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. I can't wait to see what 2024 is going to look like for you and for me. So thank you so much for listening. I'll see you same time, same place next week in the new year at the Amazon Files. Take care, everyone.